are there particular modalities, frameworks, tools that you have found to be particularly helpful in working with individuals who have trauma in their background? Sure. No, I think it's a, it's a great question. And I mean, there are many arrows in the quiver, right? And CBT is, is an arrow in the quiver. DBT is an arrow in the quiver. Medicines can be an arrow in the quiver. But where it all has to start is, is a, a search for truth, right? B- because trauma changes our, our emotions about things, right? Our feelings and emotions about things. It then changes what, we, how we think, right? And what our memories mean. So we need to look at what is the person's narrative about trauma, if they're identifying that there's trauma. And if not, what is the narrative about self? Right, because in, unless we we understand that, then it's like trying to solve a problem. So you're trying to solve a math problem, but you don't know what the equation is. Right, like we're not going to pick the right tool. We're not going to get to the right place. So because there's so much reflexive shame, and then a cascade that comes after that. Right. And a lot of times that involves like a decrease in role performance, right? Where now the person doesn't, they're, they're not performing their role, say, as a parent or as an employee or as a friend as well, right? Then the, the person begins to think of themselves in a different way. And the first thing to get at is like, what is the person's narrative? So someone who may present and say, oh, I've, I've, you know, I was really got physically hurt in my last relationship, but, you know, I mean, this is always what happens, or it's never, you know, it's never goes any differently, right? I mean, you have to, you know, instead of looking, okay, let's look at the trauma from this thing that happened to you in your last relationship, you have to look at why is the person approaching the, the whole question of relationships from a place that says things won't be okay for me? Right. What are the lessons that that person has learned that are not actually true? Right. And you have to go back to why, when did the person start thinking of that? I mean, you know, people don't, I mean, I'm saying it for effect, right? But people don't pop out of the womb thinking no one's going to treat me well. I don't deserve to be treated well, right? I always get hurt in relationships. Like where along did that conception come into to play? And how much does that person also maybe feel they don't deserve anything better? Where did that come from, right? And if we go back and we look at the, the formation of a narrative that then furthers and perpetuates trauma, then we can get at changing it, right? But then you have to get at what are the, the pain that the person felt, right? You know, the, the, the emotions involved. Like you have to go to a place that's emotional. But if you go to that place, the actual events, the emotions, the change in conception of self or conception of the world, then you can come through and say, okay, what tools does it make sense for us to apply, right? Because there are the arrows in the quiver that you noted and a lot more. The question is knowing, hey, when does one make sense versus another? And I try and write a a lot about strategies, antidotes in the book, right? And and I I, I think they're they're you know in a sense they're good ideas, but I I think they're good ideas, but they're good ideas only if they're applied in the right situation to the right person. So it goes back again to understanding the person, what happened to them, and how what is their narrative of themselves and what the world can or can't be for them. 